I would like Marie. Let me invite Daniel Savagala to unmute and lead us in the call to worship this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Go ahead, Daniel. This is the day that the Lord has made. Can you guys hear me? Oh, now we got you. Yep. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Oh, 
Please join me in the prayer of confession. Let us now confess our sins, trusting in God's boundless mercy and grace. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Hear the assurance of pardon. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Well, welcome everyone to this uh, service of worship. Let's begin by greeting one another with the peace that God gives to each and to all of us. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hello, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, 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 Lewis. Peace, 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 Judy. Well, this was very exciting. I just uh, shook hands with actual live human beings during the passing of the peace. Um, friends, uh, let me say by welcome just a couple of words of orientation, real quick. Um, we are shifting in to reopening the Westminster Presbyterian Church. Let me make sure everybody except for me is muted. Okay, are we good? Yeah, I think we're good. We, we are shifting in to in-person worship at the Westminster Presbyterian Church. And part of the way that we're doing that is we're, uh, we're, we're starting small and we're ready to build. So today there are in the room with me uh, seven people. Yes, and then uh, Jessica Chamberlain is in the next room. We tried to have her in this room, but uh, realized we had to uh, banish her to... Jess, are you in the library in the chapel? Where are you? The library. Okay, so she's here with us in spirit. Peace to you, Jessica. Thank you for being here. And uh, friends, uh, part of our transition to in-person service means we are changing our use of microphones. And so we are working with muting and unmuting a, a new variety of microphones. We may not get that quite right during this service, but the other exciting development of this week is that the uh, state of New York Department of Health uh, issued some interim guidelines for religious gatherings. And that includes the clear guidance that when everybody in the room is vaccinated, and we can uh, verify vaccination through the honor system, it says, uh, that when everybody in the room is vaccinated, uh, we can take off our masks and we don't need to socially distance. And that is why today we have an unmasked choir. Some of them are sitting quite close together. And um, you are gonna feel the sort of wonderful musical support of our singing this morning that comes with having a whole group of people standing in a room singing. I'm really delighted that that's happening. But part of the reason why you see me unmasked and why you see the choir unmasked is because of our vaccination status. Things may look different when we are all together and we are in worship that is open to the public generally where we can't verify vaccination status. But in this interim moment, we are participating in worship unmasked. This service uh, is our annual children's service, Children and Youth Sunday. And that is a, a pretty special one in this congregation. Now, Here's the thing, 
a few, well, I guess last month when we sent out a survey around uh, the, the reopening our community, one of the questions was had to do with bringing children into our worship service. And one of the options to answer that question was, I do not attend worship with children. And of our respondents, 88% said they do not attend worship with children. So then why, one might ask, should we have children front and center in a worship service when they are such a small minority of this community? Aha, well, here's the thing. A children's service, of course, is not just about the children. It's not just about the youth. It is about who we are as a whole community, right? We are an intergenerational community and part of our mission and our purpose as a church community is to welcome and to nurture children, whether they're ours or whether they belong to somebody else. And with that, I want to just tell one really quick story about my own childhood. Now, I grew up in a church, uh, a Presbyterian church in St. Paul, Minnesota. My parents had moved there, but they were both from, as we said there, back east. And so I didn't grow up around grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins. But there was another girl in the church, mom and dad, I'm talking about Robin Olson. And the truth is she did kind of look like me. We we're about the same height. We were exactly the same age. We had the same hair coloring. And one could, especially from the back, confuse the two of us as little kids. And one day after worship, after Sunday school, I was in coffee hour and out of nowhere, this guy came up sort of from behind, from the side, and he swooped me up in his arms and gave me a big hug. And I was truly shocked, but it was Robin Olson's grandfather. And he thought that I was her. And then he became extremely embarrassed that he had hugged somebody else's child. <laughs> but I was super, super happy. I have this memory of, of, of just being thrilled that for a minute, somebody thought, that somebody thought I was his granddaughter because I didn't have a grandparent who picked me up and hugged me on Sunday mornings. And the church was for me, my extended family. My parents' friends in the church were like aunts and uncles to me. Uh, their kids, the other kids in Sunday school were really like my cousins. They were as close as I had growing up to those people who are not exactly just friends, but really not blood relatives. They are people who are in your life and have this ongoing status in your life, regardless of whether you like them or not. In other words, they were my cousins. And I think that's a really important gift that we even here at Westminster can give our kids to be extended family, to be the grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Whether our kids have those biological people in their life or not, that we become an extended network of support and love. So how great that we get to really put our kids front and center this morning to hear their voices and to celebrate their stories and to give thanks for the gift that each of them is. We'll continue uh, with worship now with uh, one of our kids. Julia is going to lead us in the prayer for illumination. Julia, are you here with us? You can unmute. Yeah, hi. Hi there, Julia. Hello. God of all power, Open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts with a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Help us to hear your voice, to see your ways, and to receive with joy your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our first reader of our scripture this morning is Victor, but I am not sure that Victor is here with us yet. Victor, are you here? Oh, there you are. Welcome, Victor. Okay, yes, you're I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. You're on. Go for it. 
Okay, you ready? When the tr wait, God's gift of love. When the church was just beginning, a man named Paul traveled to many different places to start new churches. He told people about Jesus. He would stay in each city for a while and then move on. Sometimes the people in the ch in these churches didn't get along. Everyone had different ideas about how to follow Jesus. Sometimes they quarreled and argued. Paul heard that the city and the people of course were arguing it with one another. He wanted to teach them how to live together in peace. He was from far, he was far away. He was first far away from Corinth, so he sent a letter to remind them about God's love. Yes. Yes, beautiful reading. And now we'll hand it over to Salar. Salar, are you there? Do you want to unmute and read for us? Miss Belinda, do you see Salar with us this morning? No, I do not. I don't see him. Miss Belinda, would you mind reading Salar's part and then we'll pass it over to yes. Enam. Dear friends in Corinth, let me tell you again about God's gift of love. I may speak with a voice as beautiful as an angel's, but if I do not have love, I sound like a clanging gong to God. I may be able to answer the hardest questions, but if I do not have love, all my knowledge means nothing to God. Okay, and with that, and now you're up, you can unmute. I may even give my whole life to God, but if I do not have love, I then... may. Oh yeah, go ahead. I know. I may even give my whole life to God, but if I do not have love, then nothing I do matters to God. Love is patient and kind. Love does not boast or brag. Love is not rude and doesn't always want its own way. Love doesn't stay angry for a long time. Love grows in the truth. Many things come and go, but God's love never ends. God gives us three gifts. They are faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Amen. Beautiful reading. Thank you so much. And wrapping it up will be Caleb Ajay. Caleb, are you there? You can unmute. I'm here. Thank you. Let, the, let us show this kind of love to others every day. Your friend, Paul. The people, the people of Corinth saved, saved this letter and, and, shared, and shared it with others. After many years, it became part of our Bible. We can also learn from it from from a chapter about living at us in this church. Beautiful, thank you. And we have a special uh, bonus reading or really recitation this morning brought to us by Nana and Mommy. Love is potions. Love is kind. Is that not Abby? Is that not both? Is that not proud? First five, ten, thirteen, thirty, and now just remain faith, hope, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all is love. Oh, goodness me. 
Okay, friends, uh, we're, we're going to continue with some reflections from our youth. Uh, we, uh, Belinda and I consulted with someone who is much better at video than us, and that is um, David Easton. And he suggested we do this uh, fun uh, thing of passing a heart between videos, uh, which he said is something they do on TikTok. And we got all excited and we wanted to do it. And it's supposed to look like we're actually passing the heart between us on the separate videos. I just wanna say that um, Belinda and I are not quite ready for prime time on TikTok with this, but uh, just imagine that was the effect we were going for. And we'll hear from the youth and the kids in our Sunday school, their responses to the question, how can I share God's love? my toys and take care of animals. I share God's love by brushing my cats and cuddling them and feeding Bob and reminding Daddy to change his water. I share God's love by sharing what I have with my first kid. Um. Here, Nana. Hey, here. Hey. I shared God's love by by helping my family, by washing the dishes, by sweeping the kitchen, and by dressing my bed. I share my love with my best friends, with laughter and joy. I share my love of um, God by telling my friends about what he did. Hi, I share God's love through prayer. I show God's love by helping others. I show God's love by cooking for my family. I share God's love by helping my brother potty train and helping food feed and also helping my mom clean and cook. Say hi! Mommy, how do you share God's love? I love everyone. <laughs> Say it again. I love oh. everyone. Then I make the heart. Then I make mommy mm. very times day. For no, I love that everyone. Can you say? Then I smile. What's that on your shirt? That on your shirt. Yay, it's a heart. Thank you all to those, uh, everybody who contributed an idea about how we can share God's love with each other. Let's continue by singing, I Want to Be a Christian.
we're going to turn to hearing some uh, reflections from our three graduating seniors. These three uh, remarkable young adults are uh, at least, uh, I think, yeah, I think for all three of them, you have seen them grow up in Westminster. For two of them, you saw them uh, grow up since they were babies. And what a great thing it is to see them now on the threshold of adulthood, I convinced all three to have a conversation with me about their sense of call, their sense of purpose, what they see themselves doing in the coming year and how they feel called to serve in their life. I think you'll be pretty touched by their answers. And they also shared a little bit about what this year has been like for them um, not an easy year for any of us, but a particularly challenging year, I think, for our high school seniors who missed so many of the traditions of being a high school senior, who bounced back and forth between remote and in-person learning. My hat is off to these three young people for uh, finishing their senior year under really adverse conditions and surviving with a strong sense of purpose. Um, I think you'll hear that in this video. Hi, my name is Alex. Um, I attend Westminster and I'm gonna be graduating Albany High School this year. Plans are to take a gap year, but I did get accepted into As We Go, so that I'll be attending fall 2022. I plan on, well, right now I have a job, but I plan on getting a second one. I'm thinking either like a plant store or just like another cashier job, um, but I also plan on like volunteering at shelters and stuff like that, so animal shelter. <laughs> oh, was at an animal shelter? Yeah, probably Mohawk. I haven't started that yet, but I want to like maybe just providing like food for the animals and helping like take care of them and that type of thing but I'm just I'd be volunteering. Like I wouldn't be getting paid. He's just- Right, right, right. I got you. It just, when you love animals, it can also yeah. be hard to see the abandoned or hurt mm -hmm. ones. And, and I also know my grandmother made like this blanket for me where you can like just tie the fabric together. It's like the fleece. Like you can make little animal beds and I'm thinking about doing that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause like they're, they're all like such small cages. Like they need beds. <laughs> Have to be comfortable. Yeah, I really like animals. I'm actually going to Oswego for zoology. And then hopefully once I finish my undergrad, I can go to Cornell for vet school. But my grades definitely were not Cornell standards for high school. So hopefully I can get my grades on track at college. I can also get an internship through Oswego. So I'm excited about that. I might be able to work at a zoo. Oh, so you want to do zoo animals, not just... I, well, if I do end up going to Cornell, I want to be a vet and I want to be an all-animal vet. 
So working with big, big animals would be experience for me in that regards. But um, if I don't go into veterinary, I'd probably end up as like zoology or like animal rescue, that type of thing. I, oh, I really loved animals since I was really little. So <laughs> my kids will always be like, well, I want to be this when I grow up. And like mine was being a vet. Like I, it's just always been a interest of mine. Now I have a snake and a cat that are like mine, but we also have another cat and a dog and my brother has a snake. So we all, we all like animals, but I, I would have even more pets if I could. So. Yeah. But tell me about this past year for you with COVID. And um, it was definitely different. Um, up until like halfway through a little over halfway through, we weren't able to go in at all. Like it was all online. Um, personally, it was very hard for me to focus and actually do my work online. Um, and that, that was definitely, it was bad for everybody, but, um, I, they eventually let us go in like hybrid. So I was going in like every other day. And then I eventually asked to go in every day to get my grades up. Um, but now I'm passing and, and now it, and it doesn't even matter what grades I get. Cause I actually got a really good grade last quarter. So <laughs> it, it was definitely really hard for a while. Um, like I, you don't really have to get out of bed when you have like online school. So like, I really wasn't getting out of bed. I wasn't really like doing much, <laughs> um, like self-care wise. And I, I, it got really bad for a while, but I'm, it's gotten a, a bit better. Cause like people are going out more and I have a job and like, I, I have to be doing stuff now. So it's, it's, it's gotten a little bit better. Uh, my name is Henry. Um, I'm a 12th grader at Albany High, and I'm graduating in June 20. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to University at Buffalo for mechanical engineering in August. Um, it's been like a crazy year because like since the coronavirus and everything, I have to like, you know, I have like some of my classes at home and then some of our classes at school. So like, you know, I keep like, you know, switching like between the days for virtual and then in person. So it's been like, you know, a crazy year, I guess. <laughs> I want to design cars. I've been like thought about, you know, someday making my own brand of cars and like I even thought of like, you know, the names and everything. So I hope like, you know, one day I'll be able to. I was thinking of even like maybe cars will not even be online anymore. Maybe they'll be flying around maybe like 30 years, 40 years from now, maybe cars will be flying instead of like, you know, on, like so many changes to the automotive, like, you know, companies and stuff. So and the automotive world so i envision like you know mostly like the technology cars that we have now have like you know advanced like by the time you know by that time most of the things have advanced advanced and then like things have gotten like you know a little bit easier for like you know everyone like transportation going to like you know everything has become like you know a lot easier like i mean that's what i'm thinking for like you know the future so so do yeah. you feel hopeful for the future? Yeah, hopeful, very hopeful for the future, yeah. Almost like try high school, almost like every exams I take, almost like not even high school, through like middle school and everything, almost like every exams I take, I pray to God like to help me like with the exams almost like every single time. So, I mean, he has helped me like so many times throughout my whole childhood. So I'm just, yeah, very thankful. I even think like maybe he even helped me um go to that school for like a certain reason i don't even know because like if i even like picked schools i was like i want to go to ub so it, it, i just don't know why but i just wanted to go to that school so bad for like some reason so maybe it just like you no know, guidance or something like that so when i first came here i was like you know i didn't like know anything about this place like i was just so confused when i came here like when i came to church at first like church was so different from like you know the church i was used to and then school was so so different everything was like so different but like you know when i keep coming here i just keep like you know loving this place like when westminster is like you know a very nice place for me like even like they've done so many things for my family and like for me so i'm just like you know very grateful so i remember like when we came here i think a year later or two, yeah i think a year later we went on a trip to new york city for like a youth seminar or something like that like i met like a lot of people there and then it was like a very nice time like that was like you know the first time i've ever went to like new york city too so i just like i just had like you know a very good time there and then like you know it was very fun <laughs> and like i'm just like you know happy that church is like new like 
certain programs for the youth and everyone to just like you know enjoy and learn like so many things from it you know i just want to say thank you for everything yeah Um, hi, I'm Heidi Ree. I'm graduating this year from um, Bethlehem Central High School. I would say this is the busiest year and I mean, it's been fun. I enjoyed it, I would say. It wasn't terrible, but it definitely kept me busy. Yeah, I was in person doing hybrid from the beginning of school to like the end of December and I've been remote ever since. Okay. I sleep way more when it's remote and I don't have to get ready. I just like remote more. Next year, I'm going to SUNY Plattsburgh. I think maybe environmental science, but I'm not too sure. Um, two or three years ago, me and my, some girls in my Girl Scout troop we put together backpacks with science experiments in them and um, we made a couple backpacks and we like did some we like looked up some uh projects that would be good for kids and we brought the backpacks to a museum in saratoga and gave it to them so they could hand them out for like schools that were visiting and stuff have you ever thought about that in terms of the science it's sort of a science meets sociology thing. Is yeah, the... I guess so. That's probably the beginning of my interest. Um, yeah, it definitely is. I, I thought it was interesting, especially as a kid. That'd probably be interesting. So I got like sick in late February, and then I kept getting like random sicknesses. And then I went to the hospital for a week, and I got. And then I got sick again. I was just really tired. Um, oh, because I was also really anemic, so just a lot of fatigue. And so didn't want to, like, leave the house because I was just really tired. And I didn't want to do school because I was really tired. Um, and I'm definitely not as tired as I used to be. I think my that's gotten a lot better. I definitely was very just overwhelmed. Um, especially in the hospital the first few days, I was just like, because uh, all the doctors were like, oh, we don't know what's wrong with you. So I was just like, okay, that's not helpful. But it's definitely a lot better now because I have diagnoses so, or diagnoses. So I'm not as stressed, but it was definitely um, overwhelming just because it was, uh, there was so much uncertainty, so. I def so I, I know people were praying for me because my grandma kept telling me she was. So I, de I de yeah, I probably, now, well now I remember it, so I probably will, will try it. But I just completely forgot to, to be honest. But I think, yeah, I do think it worked because, or I think it was helpful. I, I think it could also be helpful, maybe like, maybe calming you down in like, keeping you on the ground. I think that definitely is important to like remind yourself just be right where you are and don't get like too caught up with everything because there's a lot to worry about and if you need it just calm yourself down for a few seconds. But yeah it's been fun here. I haven't, it's been a nice little journey through Sunday school and youth group and everything. Thank you to all three of those young people for uh, sharing uh, with some of them, talking with someone they don't know very well at all. And I really appreciate hearing about um, what the year has been like and where God's leading you for the future. Friends, we're gonna move now to a time of prayer and I'd like to have, um, uh, yeah, let me ask Tom to spotlight me at this point. And uh, 
I would like to invite this uh, community to respond to the kids that you have heard from and the kids that you know to this community and to do so with prayers for those kids and for kids in general. And I want to invite you to use the chat if you would like to uh, add a prayer. And I'd be happy to read those prayers out loud. If we were here all together in person, we could pray all together out loud for these kids, but let's do the best that we can with that virtually. Um, I invite you to submit a prayer in the chat if you can. I'll give you a minute to do that. I could even invite the actual human beings who are here with me to uh, add a verbal prayer if you'd like. I'll give you a minute to go ahead, folks. Don't be shy. Thank you, Peter. You can go ahead and put a little prayer in the chat if you'd like. These are not just somebody else's kids. We have heard from our own kids here. Thank you, Margaret, for that prayer. Beautiful. Lovely, thank you. I do, I do feel like we can really trust in the resiliency of our kids having come through, you know, these these kids who will have this as part of their history. Uh, they have it as part of their personal story for the rest of their life that when they were kids, they lived through a pandemic and that our high school seniors will tell the story of, uh, you know, that their senior year in high school, they lived through a pandemic. So what, are the, what, what more could there be? <laughs> so let's, let's pray together, friends. Holy God, hear us as we pray. Pray for the children of this community, the youth of this community, the children and youth of this world. We pray for guidance in the future health of our high school graduates, for Henry, for Lexi, and for Heidi. We pray that you continue to see good things ahead in your future, including the benefits of getting more education. We pray that these three seniors go on keeping the faith. Mabel's praise, I add my granddaughter who is ending her third year in college while dealing with illness. We pray for each of our graduating seniors for good health as they carry plans into the future. May you know our support and love and God's grace following you. I think I got oh, a few more blessings to Henry, Desmond, and Lexi and Heidi on your uh, new paths. Desmond still has a little ways to go on his new path there. It is good to see how poised you are. What accomplish what you've accomplished and what you're choosing for your futures. Pray for God's guidance in your life ahead. Your church family is with you always. And let's continue in prayers for even the youngest child in this community. God, what a pleasure it is to see children grow up around us, growing strong in your spirit. God, we pray that you would show us as a community the ways to support and uphold and strengthen the children here in our church, that you would help us to see when they're hurting and that you would guide us to the right response, the word, the gesture, even the smile, Lord, 
that helps them to know that they're not alone in this world. They're not alone in their struggles. But just as Heidi felt it from her grandmother, each of us is upheld by the prayers of others. None of us is in this world alone. None of us faces our struggles, our battles alone. What a gift it is, Lord, to be in a community together where we can actually tell each other that, that we're praying for each other, that we're holding each other in our heart. As Julia pointed out in her reflection, that is such a powerful way to share your love, God. Show us again and again, even this day, how to do that, how to how to, how to be a channel of your love, your grace, your healing, your hope. The kids, the teenagers, and to the adults in our life. With these prayers for our kids, we pray for all of the children of this world. We pray especially for the children whose lives are filled with violence. Children who live in fear of their safety, be it from the family that they're a part of, or the neighborhood in which they live, or the country where they live, or the country from which they are fleeing. God, we pray for the healing of this world. We pray for peace for ourselves, for our families, for this hurting city, indeed, for this whole hurting world. Make us a channel of that peace. And let the people say, Amen. And now Caleb will lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen Thank you, Kayla. Beautiful job with that. Friends, uh, we have some people to thank this morning, and I'm going to first hand it over to Belinda uh, to say some words of thanks to the people who have supported our Sunday School this year. Thank you. Um, this morning, I would like to thank, first of all, our teachers who have been wonderful this past year when we all had to learn to do everything on Zoom. I'd like to thank Nancy Ost, Christabel Arben, John Bosson, Joe Hart. They have been teaching our children this whole year on Zoom. And um, it's 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 been it's been great working with them. We had to adapt but they did that very quickly and every Sunday we never miss the Sunday class so John Nancy Christabel Joe thank you so much I would also like to thank my church school support team many of you do not know this but um, I have a church school support team made up of Carolyn Smith John Bosson and Joyce Esuakon, who represents parents. And this team has been so supportive. Uh, I bounce off ideas on them and we brainstorm, talk about everything, what we can do to uh, make things better for the programs, curriculum, everything. I mean, nothing is off limits concerning Sunday school. And they have been my rock. And so, John, Chris, uh, John, um, Caroline, and Joyce, thank you so much. I'd also like to thank Miss Judy Hartley for 
the diverse ways that she supports Sunday school, she knows it. So I don't want to go into details. All I want to say is thank you, Ms. Judy. Um, I would like to thank all our children. I mean, they, they had Zoom school all week and on Sundays, they showed up for Sunday school. Not many children will do that. So um, children and youth, thank you so much. Even when they were in their pajamas, they showed up. When they were away on vacation, they showed up. And so I'm very, very, very grateful. It was always good to see you. And parents, thank you that you made it your, your call to ensure that the children showed up on Sundays. And lastly, but not the least, Pastor Heather, thank you. Well, let me uh, just extend those words of thank you uh, and say a few more. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, Belinda and I are, uh, you know, if, if you had told us um, what Belinda, uh, you know, a year and a half ago that we would be leading an online Sunday school, um, that we would have said, oh no, that is, that would not be in our skill set. You, you, you should hire somebody else to do that because we're not technical like that. <laughs> and somehow we pulled this off. Uh, Ms. Belinda has told me that Sunday school attendance was actually higher this year than in-person Sunday school was last year. And that's really significant. And we have in fact even grown our Sunday school and welcomed Inam, a new member of our Sunday school uh, in the course of this year. And that is due, first of all, to the people who put the, uh, the online capacity for our Sunday school together. So I really do wanna give a shout out to Forrest Holroyd, to uh, Peter McKee, and especially to Paul Reese Rohrbacher, who is here in the room with me. Paul wrote a grant uh, to, to, to Thrivent Lutheran. And the Lutherans even helped uh, fund uh, the purchase of some iPads for uh, children in our community who didn't have an iPad. Um, we purchased the tools that they would need to um, join in online Sunday school um, and also purchased story Bibles. So each child had in their house um, uh, the, the basis for our curriculum, but also something that they could look at throughout the week to reinforce the stories that uh, Miss Belinda, Miss Nancy, and others were teaching during the week. And so thank you to Thrivent Lutheran, but most especially thank you to Westminster Presbyterian for financially supporting what was really a remarkable undertaking. I am in touch with many pastors and many of the churches in the Albany Presbytery did not have Sunday school this year. They sent things by mail, they made phone calls and kept in touch with kids, but they didn't feel they could pull off a full online interactive Sunday school class. We pulled it off and um, uh, our, our, our Sunday school was strengthened this year because of it. But none of this, absolutely none of this would be possible without the one and the only Belinda Quay. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just, Belinda, there's a, a, a there's thunderous applause here, but I, I, you know, there was, oh, and there's some applause from the Zoom room too. Well-deserved. Belinda, there, there is absolutely, there's, there's no way to describe what it meant to me this year, this year of starting a new ministry and being so isolated in this building to have a partner, to have you as a partner, it truly has been, uh, it, it's probably the most significant positive of this year has been our relationship, our growing friendship and our sense of partnership in mission to serve this congregation. You are, are a person of deep faith deep commitment to Jesus Christ 
and deep commitment to the children and families of this church. But what's more, you have a sense of humor, you have a sense of delight and joy, and you have a really, really big heart. So thank you for being a partner. And I look forward to many years ahead of partnership with you. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, let's uh, turn it over to, I think Julia is going to play a little music for us on uh, a recording. And during this time, we can reflect on our giving back. This is a time of uh, offering uh, uh, virtually. So thank you for your gifts that sustain this community financially, spiritually, and emotionally. Take it away, Julia. to hearing more from you, Julia. Over the coming years, as we continue to benefit from your spirit, your voice, and your talent. So good to have all of you join us together for this service. We'll close this morning with the hymn, uh, I'm going to live so God can use me. to sing with other people. <laughs> I look forward to more of that. We're still working in uh, our sound, our muting and unmuting for all of the ways in which we did not do that too smoothly this morning. We ask your forgiveness in advance. Uh, well, in retrospect. Friends, go from this place assured that the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you and you this day and forevermore. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
we're done. <laughs> well, friends, we'll take just a few minutes for some celebrations and announcements. And then um, if you'd like to stick around, we'll have some uh, time in breakout rooms. And maybe those of us who are in our own uh, here in person could even have a moment of coffee hour. No coffee. But uh, uh, friends, are there any uh, birthdays this morning that we can celebrate? I feel like there's one coming up. I know Nancy Crivola this uh, Tuesday, right, on the 15th, is turning 99, which is a pretty remarkable experience for anyone. But to have come through a global pandemic uh, at the age of 97, 98, and to turn 99 now uh, and, and to be able to have your whole family with you. Uh, Nancy's uh, extended family, uh, two sons and a daughter, uh, are up here uh, with her this week, helping her transition from Beverwick to, uh, what's it called? Eddie Village. Eddie Village Green. Eddie Village Green. Uh, so uh, some of us signed a joint birthday card uh, to Nancy at the picnic, but um, uh, invite any and all who are friends of Nancy to send her uh, a birthday card at Eddie Village Green. If you need help with that address, uh, drop me a note or uh, email the church office. Uh, any other birthdays this week? Go ahead and unmute if there's one you'd like to share. My sister had Oh, her Paul's saying that uh, he and Darren celebrate 47 years of marriage tomorrow. Oh, Wonderful. happy anniversary, Great. Paul and Darren. That's, it's an accomplishment for anyone, but to make it through a global pandemic and stay married is uh, yes. really something. Especially because his seminary roommate said it won't last six months. It, oh, it, it, there, there were predictions that it wouldn't last, Darren is saying, but they have disproved all predictions. Bravo. <laughs> I think it's Leah's birthday coming up this week, but I need verification on that. Uh, but I think Leah, uh, three, is uh, her birthday is on Thursday. Others, anything else we should celebrate? My sister's well, friends, 79th uh, birthday was this week. Go ahead, Mabel. Uh, my sister's uh, 79th birthday was this week. Oh, wait, I just realized I was muted. Did somebody else say something that I didn't hear or acknowledge? I'm sorry. I'm still working on the sound here. Whose birthday is <laughs> My sister, Helen. She was oh. 79 this week. Happy birthday to Helen. Oh, and Mary, yeah, go ahead. Mary, I think you're muted. Oh, no, you don't want to say anything? Oh, it's Inam? Not Mary. Hey. I'm so sorry. I was, you, you, your, your screen says Mary, my dear. So go ahead, Inam, how, how, how can I help you? What would you like to announce? Okay. What? <laughs> she said, she said oh. if somebody's birthday is coming up. And now whose birthday's coming up? I know. <laughs> it's Emily's birthday. Whose birthday? Emily's birthday. Okay, well, happy birthday to Emily. And who is Emily? She's in my class. Okay, well, happy birthday to her. Friends, I hope you saw the announcement that um, this week uh, there's a Brooks barbecue fundraiser for Focus and John Bosson has invited us to hang out in his backyard and eat the Brooks uh, barbecue together. John, anything we need to know about that? Uh, rain or shine, you know, if hopefully the sun will be out or it won't be raining, but if it is, we'll just trash the house. So okay. don't, be, don't worry about that. <laughs> Well, then we're really hoping it's going to be raining because that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> oh, and wait, I see a message here. Peter McKee, who's such a, a, a shy fellow, uh, has uh, shared this only on the chat, but uh, it turns out he has a birthday on Wednesday. Oh, happy birthday, Peter. Happy birthday, Peter. I, why don't we, we got Darren here at the piano. Let's, let's sing to all to Nancy, to Peter, to Leah, and anybody else. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
everyone. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> it's so much fun to do worship with some other humans in the room. I'll keep saying that for a while still. Okay, friends, uh, unless there's any other business for us to do together, let's go into a time of breakout room.